On another matter, but somewhat related, a couple weeks ago I was talking with Acting and Capacity Intern Chief Kearns. We were waiting outside, as it turns out, the executive session for the police auditor. We were all cooling our heels out in the mezzanine. And he just volunteered this. He said, I really feel, Carol, that with the system as it is, it's not going to succeed. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, that they answer to the council and not the city manager. And I, I said, well, Pete, they, uh, there are systems across the country that, that do answer to not the, the authority city manager. And he says, well, it's a different system. So I was just a little concerned to hear that because I thought that was something the voters really made clear that we wanted a system police auditor that answered to the elected officials and not the hired. I wasn't going to say done. The <laughs> city manager. So um, how do you feel about that? that? That's sort of like a little heads up that he shared that. And, and I, I was troubled. I thought, well, if the chief, and I know that he really does want this external oversight system to work. He was coming from a position of concern. But I guess it's a moot point because it's set up to be under the council, not the city right. manager. Right. I mean, it makes it harder. You know, you have a city, the city council trying to supervise an employee, which they don't have to do with anybody else other than the city manager. And so the I judge. Think, and yeah. The judge. And so I think that makes it, you know, that makes it tough, frankly, I think, for anybody who's in that auditor's position and probably for the city council. I mean, how are you going to have this diverse group of people supervising one employee. Did they appoint two counselors to be the kind of touch base per I think group? they yes. might have now. And like you know Clark that's something and Ellen Zelenka, right, right. Mm -hmm. that'll that's get right. refined. But you know, before this whole system was even put on the ballot, I mean the police commission, people like Munir spent, you know, untold hours, probably people like you, researching what was the best system and which approach they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so I have to think that, you know, there were specific reasons to put that position under the control of city council. Mm -hmm and not kind of institutionalize it, you know, as part of city government under yeah. the city manager. Well, I wasn't actually involved in, but, but I thought the theory being that because city council are elected representatives, that does make an elevated accountability, that if they really started making decisions and actions against the independent external oversight, people could say, we're going to recall you, we want this, and you're working against it. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that might be occurring to some of them lately. <laughs> Because we are hearing a lot of talk from people that see that they're not supporting it, they're working against it, and it's inexplicable to us why. Well, I think it'll be interesting, you know, they're in the process, the city council's now in the process of hiring, uh, you know, for the auditor position, and I think it'll be really telling to see who they put forth as candidates for that and who they select. Um, and on the issue of, of the auditor, the reason why I feel so strongly that the auditor needs to have a legal background, needs to be an attorney, is that so many of the decisions and issues that he or she faces are legal. Right. And if, it, if and, it's an uncertain territory, you could make wrong right. choices, decisions. Yeah. And if the auditor is not a lawyer, you shift the balance of power in the system. Mm -hmm. If the auditor is not someone trained to make an independent legal judgment on issues, then it, it, it shifts the balance of power against the auditor's office because all of a sudden the auditor can't make that independent legal judgment. So the police or the police union are going to say, well, we th you know, this is the way it is and this is the way you ought to interpret this situation or this ordinance and who are you to say different? You're not a lawyer. But of you course, know, this, they have a lawyer to right. go to to get that. Well, you know, they <laughs> have a lawyer, and they ha and there's the city attorney that may express. The city attorney will express his or her opinion on uh, how it should be interpreted, and yeah, there you go. That's 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 the rule because you don't have somebody uh, from the other side saying, mm -hmm. "Well, no, no." So, along with requiring the auditor now to check in with the city attorney, now there's a decision to remove that as a. Uh, job recommendation. So is this what you're referring to with your comments that it looks like support in city council is a little shaky? Uh, if, I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but that was what I interpreted. <laughs> and uh, I find that's troubling when you consider the voter yeah. support out there. Yeah, it it, it is troubling the um, the recent actions and and comments that I've heard from the from the city council. Uh, I'm concerned that support for the system may be eroding mm -hmm. or lessening. 
Um, and, uh, yeah, that concerns me an awful lot. Well, you know, we saw a lot of people show up to the pay arc meeting. Not a lot, but, but it was so many meetings. It was like eight or ten or something. But we had a cadre of folks that really wanted to follow this. And then there was the open public forum. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing from a number of the people who served on pay arc that they were so taken by the passion of the people who spoke there and the commitment. So I'm wondering where the disconnect is with the city council. Are they just not aware of how much this community cares about this external oversight system and would take a dim view at watering it down. I mean, what's going on here? You know, I, I really don't know. I, I was was feeling um, quite optimistic during the uh, the payork meetings. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, the people, the council members that were that were there, um, other people's on the panel, the public, everybody seemed to be getting it. Mm -hmm. uh, we seem to be moving forward. Yep. We seem to be recommending changes that would make the system work better, that would give the auditor um, more power in the in the areas that she needed it. And then something changed in the wind, and I don't know what it was, but things hmm. seemed to be turning in the other direction. A year ago this month, I called then Chief Robert Lehner because I was concerned about a lot of the cartoons characterizing Councilor Batman, the commentaries from the union, mm -hmm. basically dissing any support of the mayor and council who supported external oversight. And so in our conversation, I asked Chief Lehner, I said, are, are, are there any police who are troubled at how this onslaught attack on the external oversight system, how that might be impacting their relations? He said, absolutely, Carol, but they will not take a stand. They will not buck. I think his words were, they won't buck their union leadership. I think to me it's just hard to figure out a solution to this. You know, this whole process would be greatly um, benefited if more people could put themselves in other people's shoes. Yes, and that's community too. You know, that's community right. and police putting these themselves in these other shoes and try to see from the other side. Is that compassion or something? Yeah, like that? I, um, because that's the difficulty. You know, police, um, you know, and somewhat prosecutors too, um, because of the work that um, they do, see some bad stuff, some bad stuff, and it has an effect. It has an effect on you. It changes the way you look at the, at the world. And unfortunately, oftentimes the reaction to that is to, to, to make things black and white, to simplify things, and it's a kind of a sort of self-protection of your own, mm -hmm. your own psyche. Um, and and that, that can be dangerous. It's this kind of a psychological circling of the wagons. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, I'd like to ask you, we've been talking about some of the challenges in the baby stages of this. Can you point out to some things that have been uh, encouraging to you or signs of progress or good incidents where you, because of the intervention of this oversight system that the community can come in and file a complaint and they actually get some sort of satisfaction that a lot of people felt wasn't there in the old IA only system, right. internal affairs. Well, Is there something you can touch on? I think a couple things. I mean, I think we've seen internally and I don't know if it's, you know, how much CRB or the auditor has to do with it. I mean, I do think Acting Chief Kearns is doing a very good job, but I think generally we've seen the internal affairs investigations get better. Um, you know, the questions aren't as leading, they're, they're thorough, you know, they're generally timely, those types of things. So I think the internal process itself is getting better. Um, I do think, you know, hopefully citizens feel like maybe they don't always get the result they want, but at least there is somewhere they can go um, that someone, you know, be responsive and I, and I think in my mind um, the big benefit to the system is the whole situation the whole Magana Lara situation I don't think would play out the same way today yeah good there's um, more accountability and responsibility don't. in the right. department I mean a complaint would not go into the police department be investigated only by the police nobody else ever sees it or gets wind of it
is to make this system work mm -hmm. because that's what the, the citizens of Eugene want. They want it to work.